In this video, we're going to learn about the five congruence theorems that prove congruent triangles. So, so far, we've talked about figures being congruent if and only if all corresponding sides and all corresponding angles are congruent. But basically, these five shortcuts or these five theorems are going to serve as shortcuts. So basically, instead of having to show that all three pairs of corresponding sides are congruent and all pairs of corresponding angles are congruent, we can use any of these five different um, combinations. So basically, the S's stand for sides, the A's stand for angles, and the H and L we'll talk about when we get to it. So for the first one here, the side-side-side situation, or three sets of corresponding congruent sides, um, if those are, so if we have two triangles, so let me go ahead and just draw two triangles. I'm going to try to make these look congruent the best I can. So if I have these two triangles and all three pairs of corresponding sides are congruent, that would guarantee that the angles must also be congruent, therefore making the figures congruent. So that's the idea here. If I have, this next one is side angle side. Notice where the A is, it's in between the two S's. So we call that, so if two sides and the included angle, so basically, let me sketch a picture of this. So again, trying to make these two triangles look congruent to the best of my ability here. So if I want to talk about side angle side, well, I'm going to have two pairs of corresponding sides that are congruent and the angle that's included or the angle that's in between those two sides or the angle that's touching those two sides. Those two sides make up that angle. So that would guarantee that the third sides would be congruent as well as the other two pairs of angles. That's what it's saying. So these are all shortcuts. So instead of having to show six things, we can show three things. Number three is angle side angle. So again, notice this one. Now we have the side in between the two angles. So we call that the included side. So basically the two angles touch that included side. So let's again try to sketch a picture where your triangles look congruent. So if I were to mark these, I would have two sets of angles, and then the sides in between those angles would be congruent. Notice that too when I'm marking these, I'm never using the same number of slashes or same number of arcs when I'm talking about a new pair of angles. So just be careful of that. Um, and then the next one is similar to angle side angle, but now notice that the S is outside of the two angles. So meaning it's the non-included side. So let's go ahead and sketch that. So again, I'm trying to make these look congruent. I'm going to try to make that look a little bit more congruent. So that would mean I would have my two angles just like the previous one. The only difference is now my side is going to be outside of the two angles. So it's only touching one of the angles. Just like the acronym here, the S only touching one of the A's. So it should be angle, angle, side. You could also use this other side because then it would just mean that the side is touching the um, single arcs, which would totally be fine as well. And then the last one is called HL. Um, you must show right triangles. So now you might be thinking, okay, well, HL, if it's, we're talking about right triangles, that's going to be the hypotenuse and the leg or one of the legs of right triangles. I often will refer to HL. I'll say HL dash right triangle um, just because that's the third thing. Because for all of these, you always need three things or three um sides or angles congruent in order to say that the triangles are congruent. So for each side, I'll go ahead and draw two right triangles. Make sure you put the right angle in there. And in order for each side to work, you have to have the hypotenuse. And then you have to have either leg. It doesn't matter which, either leg would be fine. Notice that this is really the angle side side situation because notice up top, I never talked about, well, what happens if we move the A outside of the two S's? Um, and that doesn't prove congruent triangles unless it's a right triangle. So when we have HL, it's basically a special case of what happens when you're talking about congruent angles that's not included between the two sides. So 
So this only works for right triangles. Um, side side angle does not work as well as triple A or angle, angle, angle. Those do not prove congruent figures. Just a reminder of that. So side side angle does not work. Neither does triple A. So those are the two methods. The two short that do not prove congruent angles. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're just going to practice some of these. Um, so things that you can mark in the diagram before we identify. So um, in the diagram, so use diagram to mark reflexive property. So we talked about that as being shared, a shared side or shared angles. You can always look at the diagram to mark that. Um, and vertical angles. So those are the two things that you can mark just from the diagram. Otherwise, you'll have to be given information, like you'll have to be given a midpoint to be able to mark the two congruent segments, or you'd have to be given an angle bisector to mark the two congruent angles. But just from the diagram alone, you can use reflexive property and vertical angles. And then from there, we'll go ahead and pick which one of the five methods. So for this first one, oops, I just crossed the page. We are going to look to see, do we have reflexive property or vertical angles? And I have this shared side among the two triangles. So I'm going to mark that with an X for reflexive property. And then if you think about it, we have an angle here that matches with this angle. This reflexive property counts as a side. And then we have an angle um, in both triangles that match. So when I go and look at my triangle, the side is between the two angles. So this would have to be angle, side, angle. So angle side angle would be the method for this one. If we look at the next one here, again, I can mark my reflexive property. And if I compare this red triangle to the green triangle, well, I see I have a side in the green that matches with the side in the rest, in the, in the red. Um, I have a side in the red that matches with a side in the green, and then I have that shared side, so I have SSS. So these triangles would have to be congruent by SSS. If we look at the next page here, I see right away that I can mark vertical angles congruent. Vertical angles are always congruent. And then when I look at my picture here, I see a side in the first triangle that matches with a side in the second triangle an angle in the first triangle that matches with an angle in the second, and then another side. I see that I have two S's and an A, and the angle is between the two sides, so side, angle, side. Let me keep going. The next one I can't mark vertical or reflexive. I don't have anything to mark there, but I have angles that match up. So I have triple, triple, and then I have the doubles that match. So this would be angle, 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 which is not a congruence theorem. It does not verify that the triangles are congruent. So for this one, we would have to say can't determine. The next one here, I have um, right triangles. So I'm kind of thinking HL, but just because it's a right triangle doesn't mean it's HL. So you really want to look at what's marked. So if you look, you have a side that matches with this side, a side, a shared side, matches in both triangles, and then we have angles. So see how we have two S's and then an A? The angle is outside of the two S's. So that means we have side-side angle, which we can't have. So then think about this as hypotenuse leg. Well, this right here is a hypotenuse, the two hypotenuses of the right triangles. We have our right triangle, and then this is our leg, so we do have HL. So just because it's a right triangle doesn't mean it's HL. It has to be the situation where you have a hypotenuse, a leg, and a right triangle, or it's side-side angle case. That works. So this next one here, I have vertical angles. And when I mark what I have, I have angles that match up, angles that match up, and sides that match up. And my side is outside of the two angles. It's not touching those. So this is going to be angle, angle, side. So notice it was a right triangle, but it doesn't have to be HL. And then the last one here, I think is the same. We just saw this one, the same as number four. So this is, um, we have angles, AAA, doesn't work. So this one, we can't determine. So that's it. So we're going to see lots more practice with this in class. Um, it's a very important topic, so we will do more work with this tomorrow.